Hey, so for this video, we're going to look at how the Java compiler works. And to do that, we actually have to be able to run the Java compiler um, and look at sort of what it does with its inputs and things like this. And in order to do that, I think the best way to do this, and this is gonna be like super weird for some of you, um, is to go into this environment that, you know, you might've read about a little bit in coders uh, known as the command line. So I will meet you there. Hey, um, so what is this place? Um, this is a environment that you'll learn about more in future classes, um, but this is sort of a power tool when it comes to computers. Many of you are used to using computers through these uh, what are called graphical user interfaces, the type of thing you're used to if you use a web browser, or even those of you that have done some programming are used to if you use an IDE. But there's another older, darker um, way of interacting with your computer through an interface that's, that's known as uh, the command line. Um, and this is something that um, you know, goes way back. I remember you know, being, a, being a kid and um, you know, going over to a friend's house and watching this, this guy who's really impressive, like zoom around on his computer using, uh, using the command line. And um, now I kind of do the same thing myself sometimes, although I do use some of those tools I was talking about, like web browsers and IDs and stuff like that. Um, so this is a place where we can run commands um, we can interact with the computer. We can do things like open files and view their contents. We're going to do some of those things together on this short video. Um, but one of the things that we can do here that's really interesting is that we can directly run the Java compiler. And the way that we do that is by running a, a program uh, called Java C. And this is how we do this at the command line. I type the name, I hit return. You see that I didn't provide it with any more information and without any arguments. Um, you can sort of think of this as sort of like calling a function, but without providing any arguments, uh, without putting anything after the name, uh, it doesn't know what to do. And so it gives me this long list of options uh, of different ways that I can tell it what I want to do. Um, but this is the Java compiler. One of the things that I can have it do is tell me what version of the Java compiler it is by typing this command. And you'll see that this is, um, I'll, I'll move this to the top. This is Java C14. So this is the Java compiler for the um, Java version 14, which is the latest uh, release. Okay, so um, what does the compiler actually do? So the compiler is responsible for taking our source code, the actual text that we type into, um, into our IDE or into our playground window, or in this case, we're gonna do it in the command line. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and transforming it into this other representation. Now, this is not a required step. There's other languages that kind of don't do this, like Python is one of them. But Java has this model that it shares with languages like C, C++, and even newer languages like Go and Rust and things like that of a two-stage process. So I run a program called the compiler that takes my source code. That's the stuff we're learning how to do. The source code is the for loops and the while loops and the variable declarations and the function declarations and all that good stuff. That's what we focus on in this class. But the compiler takes that the compiler is also a computer program, by the way. It's a program that's written by human beings. Uh, and its job is to take that source code and transform it into this other representation that in Java is called bytecode. And you can think of bytecode as being a much simpler set of instructions. So if the source code is like four i is equal to zero i is less whatever, the bytecode literally consists of things that are like, add one to this number and store it here. Um, you know, if this number is greater than zero, jump to this other place in the program and things like that. It's a very, very, it's a simpler um, set of instructions that are then executed in the next step that we'll talk about in the next, um, in our next video. So, so let's actually uh, have the Java compiler do some work for us. Now, uh, what we need to do in order for this to happen is we're gonna have to actually open up a file. And again, I don't expect you to understand what I'm doing here, uh, but what I'm doing, what you'll start to see me do is actually write some Java source code in here. The other thing that's a little bit tricky about this doing this example right now is that I'm gonna have to uh, include some things in this file that some of you are familiar with that have been programming before, but some of you are not. One of the things about Java that makes it maybe not the perfect language to use for an intro class is that um, if you actually wanna run a simple Java program, there's a bunch of syntax involved that we haven't even taught you yet. We do this on purpose. We bring you along step by step from very small pieces and in about a week, well, I should be at the point where we can talk about these full building blocks and what they mean. But if I actually want to run my code this way, the playground handles this for you. But if I want to run my code this way with the Astro Java compiler, I'm going to have to give it what it wants. So let me do a little bit of that. So this stuff is going to be complete gobbledygook, and I don't expect you to understand it. 
Um, okay, and this is. Now, some of this, I suspect you're gonna recognize. So, you know, this looks like a method declaration, the part that's on the right here, void, main, I see, I see some familiar things. This is a, 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 a string array. Um, so I'm, I'm writing a method declaration here. So that, and, and then this is the stuff that doesn't make much sense. Public, class, example, public, static, void. And that's the stuff that we've been hiding from you. Um, but we will, you will learn this stuff. And by the end of the semester, in fact, actually by a week or two from now, you'll understand this complete example. And hopefully you'll understand a little bit about why we've been avoiding talking about it because it really does sort of work backwards in Java, right? We really want to talk about the basic building blocks and then move out. Okay. so. Um, but let's let's write some more code in here. Uh, so I'm going to write my system that I've got println. I'll just write hello world. This is actually the simplest hello world that you can write in Java. You'll notice that I'm writing this in a file called example.java. Um, and you know what I'm doing is really using a, a text editor. This is not an IDE. It's not a big complex tool. It's just a simple thing. It's really just for executing for for uh, writing text. Okay. So I'm going to save this, and now if I, uh, this is a command that will show me, oops, something in here that I wasn't expecting. Um, this is a command that will show me um, what's in the current directory that I'm in. You see that there's this file called example.java, and I have a simple command I can run at the command line that will show me the contents of that file, and you see the contents that I was just entering. So this is what's contained in example.java. Now I have an input that I can provide to the Java compiler. So instead of just running Java C, I'm going to run Java C and then pass, I'm going to provide it. This is sort of like an argument. Um, I'm going to provide it the name of the file containing the Java code that I want to compile and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I ran it, thought for a minute, nothing happened. Interesting. So, but did something happen? One of the things, I actually had an interesting conversation with somebody about this on the forum. Um, one of the things about working at the command line is typically when commands succeed, they don't produce any output. You get used to that. It's sort of like, maybe this is part of the psychology of being in computer science. It's like, when things went well, it's not the compiler, it's like, yes, you did it. Your file contained valid Java code and I compiled it and that's awesome. It's like, no, whatever, I'll just be quiet. Uh, you'll see in a minute that when things go wrong, it has a lot to say. Uh, but when they go right, but what happened here? Okay, so let's look and see what happened to my uh, code in here. And it's exactly the same code that I started with. Okay, so that's weird. Um, you know, I, I said that this program was supposed to produce output of some kind, but I didn't see it print anything and it didn't run the code because it didn't print Hello World. So, so what happened? Well, let's look around in the directory again. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so before I only saw this file name example.java, and now I have another file with a different extension, same file name, called example.class. What is that? Well, let's try uh, looking at the contents. And this is not going to end well. Ooh. Uh, well, actually, I, I, I can see some stuff in here. But um, this is actually not a text file. Uh, this is a file that contains, you'll see that there's all this uh, black in here. And that's that actually doesn't mean there's not content there. That's not just white space. It's, it's characters that. Um, my, my terminal doesn't know how to print uh, because what's in this file is not text, um, not supposed to be interpreted as text. Um, now, there is a way, what's in this file is what's called Java bytecode. There is a way um, that I can, I can see what's in there and that's using a program called Java P. Um, this is, and I always forget how to use this. Uh, let's see, so I'll print Java P example. Um, and now you'll see, this is interesting. So if I just run Java P example, You'll see that I didn't provide example.class, and I don't want to talk about what this is, but this is how this tool, tool works. Um, you know, this is sort of, I, I see some things in here that sort of looks familiar to me. This looks like a method declaration, except there's no body. And then it says compiled from example.java. So this is the compiled bytecode. Um, and again, if I take a minute and review what the options are to this, there is a way to have it print, there we go, uh, dash C. So uh, when you run these type of commands at the command line, you can provide options to them. So I'll use this option. And now what you'll see is the actual, what's actually inside this file. So this is sort of, this 
uh, program has taken the contents of this file that are this compiled bytecode that was produced by the compiler, and it's transformed it into uh, something that's human readable. So it's printing it off in a way that's that's helpful for us. This is not the contents of the file. This is a printed version of the contents. It's like you know if if a tool took some language you didn't understand and kind of translated it into English, right? So this is not the original contents, but it's been uh, printed in a way that is designed to make us uh, able to understand it. And so this is the actual contents of this bytecode. Now again, this is not a class on Java internals, so I'm not really going to do much with this example, except to point out a couple of things. First of all, again, there's some stuff in here that we recognize. When we see unfamiliar things in computer science, you know, looking for things that we recognize. Don't get, you know, uh, freaked out by all the stuff that doesn't make sense. Look for the things that do look familiar and then kind of try to think like, what could be happening here? So I've got this something again, remember the public static void? You know, that's there again, I see that again. Um, I also see the string that I uh, put into my program, Hello World, that appears over here. Um, and so I see some bits and pieces of something. I see that public class example that's way up at the top. And what's in this file are the instructions for the actual Java, what's called the Java Virtual Machine or the Java Bytecode Interpreter. And that's the next video that we're going to do is on how that works. But what's in here are the instructions that that's going to execute. Okay, so that's what happens when you have a successful compilation. But what if something is wrong? So I'm gonna take that example that I compiled successfully and I'm gonna break it in a kind of a common way. I forgot a bracket at the end. So now I'm gonna run Java C again, and now you see something that might look familiar. These are actually very similar to the error messages that you might see um, in our playground examples because we're actually using the same um, algorithm. Uh, we're using a, a different form of it. Uh, we're using it a different way. We're not actually running this command in this exact same way, but we're using the same code. And so the, the error messages are very similar, right? Um, so again, let's go back and fix this. And you can see all the different types of error messages that it can produce, like when it doesn't understand something. Um, the other thing I want to do is let's remove, so I'm going to remove this class file, and then I'm going to run this in a failure setting. And what I want to show you is no class file is produced. So when there is a compiler error, um, Java does actually not uh, produce any bytecode because it can't. Like it doesn't understand what you wrote in here. If you don't write valid Java, it can't produce that thing that we're going to execute next. Um, so, you know, bugs at this stage are, are really useful. We also get the same type of problems that we would see before. So here I'm going to assign a float literal to a variable called i. And you'll see that, exact, again, these error messages are probably familiar to you from our playground. The very same thing is happening. But this is the point at which it's happening. And that's why we're doing these videos is to detangle these two steps. When you have a compiler error, it means that Java can't even produce the code to execute, this bytecode, this other representation. It can't even do the translation. Maybe another mental model to think about this is like, there are two parts of Java. There's the compiler uh, person and the executor person. And when you uh, run your code, when you try to run your code, you give it to the compiler person. If they don't understand it, they just give it right back to you. Um, if they do understand it, they give it to the executor person and they try to execute it. And sometimes even at that point, something goes wrong. But if the compiler person can't understand it, they just hand it right back to you and they're like, sorry, you know, I got nothing. And uh, they don't even bother the other person who's their helper, right, the executor. Um, anyway, so, you know, these type, the, the type of mistakes that the compiler can identify, though, are, are somewhat limited. And, and this, is, this is also appears in the walkthrough. Uh, but this is my favorite example of, of, you know, the Java compiler being not super helpful is that I can take a variable called s, its string, set it to null, and this code will compile just fine. So don't overestimate, particularly an old compiler like Java. Uh, Java is an old language. The compiler is less helpful than compilers in other languages. So something that's like an obvious problem. There are other more modern languages that will not allow you to do this. The compiler would say, whoa, you set that to null and you're dereferencing on the next line. That is not cool. The Java compiler is like, yeah, I'll tr we'll try it. Right? We'll see what happens. I mean, the chances that this code works are zero. But the Java compiler is not sophisticated enough to figure that out. Again, there's been a lot of work in this area. So, you know, every piece of computer software has gotten dramatically 
um, more powerful over the past you know, decade, two decades. That doesn't always mean faster because they're doing more. But compilers are no different. So the Java compiler was designed for computers that are much slower. On much more powerful computers, the compiler can also do uh, a lot more work. Uh, it can do a lot more for you. Um, and one of the things that you'll enjoy when you learn some other programming languages is have compilers that really try to do more to help you out. So there are compilers that would see this and say, no way, right? I see that that's a mistake, fix it. I'm not even gonna try to run this code because I know things are gonna go boom. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, a little bit of a, a preview of the dark arts of the command line. Uh, this environment's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, it's very easy to pick up. Um, you are, you know, it's the same thing you do with other things. Um, you know, I'm not gonna claim that I do all my work here, but I do do some things still at the command line. I learned how to do this stuff a long time ago, and so it's comfortable for me. Um, but I would say that there are certain types of tasks that you can really get done much more efficiently and much more precisely with this type of environment, even if you still use like ID, you know, integrated development environments and other tools to help you write your actual source code. Uh, knowing some command line, uh, having some facility with the command line can be pretty useful. All right, so that's compilation. The next uh, video we're gonna look at, execution.